Hey, Michael Church, Crawl Space Ninja. Today I want to share with you a resource that I think would be very, very good for you to take a look at, especially if you're dealing with a lot of uh, standing water in your yard. Okay, so uh, developing a good yard drainage plan is a, a great way to make sure you keep a lot of standing water off of your foundation, out of your basement, and out of your crawl space. So uh, stay tuned. Okay, so this website is the ndspro.com, ndspro.com website. Now, they've got a lot of great information on here for homeowners, which we're going to click on this link right here. If you go to ndspro.com and you hold your mouse over the homeowners, I want you to go down to visit the home drainage center. You click on that and this is going to open up a pretty cool page that's going to share with you some ideas. So this is a, a typical home that they feel like a lot of people are having issues with. You've got maybe a pool in the background. You've got downspouts that aren't draining right. You've got standing water on patios. You've got maybe a basement or a crawl space that's leaking. You've got water infiltrating in through the garage, you've got uh, some standing water on the walkways, and then maybe your neighbor's dumping water on you, or uh, you've got some standing water in the yard here. So uh, all of these would be considered, in my opinion, water drainage issues. Now, I will share with you that uh, they have some great information on here. I feel like that some of the tips I'm gonna share with you today are uh, maybe we'll expand on what they've already done. So let's uh, let's take a look at some of the things they're talking about here. So first of all, the uh, the the nice thing about this is whatever you're you're suffering from, whatever your home is doing, you can actually hold your mouse over uh, the exclamation point and then water on the driveway. Then you can click on here and it'll take you down to the problem. Okay, so here's what they're recommending for the water on the driveway. The other nice thing about it is you can actually uh, determine by water capacity how to handle the situation. And I want to show uh, just a, a, a brief summary of that. Now, a high capacity uh, wants you to install a dry well in the system. So this is what we call a dry well. Uh, basically, what it's going to do is it's going to hold a lot of water from the driveway is going to come into the dry well and then it's going to hold water. It's also going to allow water to go down into it from above. Okay, so if you got some standing water in this area, but then as this dry well fills up, it's going to allow that water to leach out to a pop-up valve out here. The other thing that I want you to notice is whenever I switch to medium capacity, how it changes. Okay, so it gets rid of the, uh, the uh, aggregate easy flow pipe and then switches it to just a normal generic pipe, okay? So I guess they're feeling like this pipe is gonna be more beneficial for heavy rains and heavy water uh, in the yard, okay? So this is going to allow uh, water to infiltrate the pipe below the ground surface. And if you switch to a medium capacity, it's basically just a solid pipe that's gonna move that water out to the pop-up valve more rapidly. There's your uh, pop-up emitter. Now notice when you go to low capacity, we lose the, uh, the dry basin right here, okay? So then it's just gonna go straight from the speedy channel drain to a pipe out to the pop-up valve. So if you've got just a little bit of water coming at your garage door, this is gonna be a good way to take care of that. And remember, you're gonna put this outside of the garage, okay? So this is not inside the garage. You may choose, if you've got tons of water coming from around the perimeter and you go with an interior uh, water system that you would have uh, some trench along this area on the inside of the garage that will lead to a sump pump. But this is an exterior, good for any DIYer to do. Plus, Crawl Space Ninja does some yard drainage work as well. We can do some of this. You want to, if you've got a concrete drive, you want to make sure you use a, a saw to cut that, and then we can put the speedy channel in, drain it out to the pop up emitter. And then, of course, if you've got a lot of water, we can use the uh, dry basins here, okay? So that's that's this. The other thing that's nice about this is if you scroll down to installation instructions, all right, it'll actually give you the installation instructions. Now it tells you roughly how many 
uh, total man hours it'll take, uh, 24 to 26 man hours according to this. Now that could be sped up if you use a trench uh, system like a ditch witch or something like that. There's your material costs and then the tools needed. So this is kind of nice. This uh, gives you a lot of that information. It shows you uh, the, the different materials that you're going to use. Now look what they've done here. They've taken that speedy channel and they've put it uh, underneath so that all the water will drain down into a pipe that goes out to that dry basin I was telling you about. Then you're going to install your dry basin and your uh, easy flow here. Connect it to the, uh, the dry basin and then to the pop-up emitter and then backfill. Now this is the part I want you to pay attention to right here. This backfill and replant part. All right, so look what they say. Do not backfill with soil with high clay content. Now, this is the whole reason for this video, really, is to talk about that, okay? So in Tennessee and most of the South, if not most of the United States, except for maybe the coastal areas, we have high clay content, okay? So this is an easier uh, process if you don't have high clay content. And let me let me go back to what I'm talking about here. But before I leave, one other thing you can do is you can have them email uh, you or download you the instructions on the shopping list, okay? They'll ask you for your name and email and all that, so you can click on that and uh, fill that out. As a matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and show you what that looks like. See, name, first name, last name, water on driveway, high capacity, get shopping instructions. Of course, they are getting your information uh, uh, and as part of that. Now, the other thing I want to talk to you real quick about this is let's go back up here. So let's say in this scenario that you had some standing water, let's say you had a hill right here. Okay. And that hill was coming and bringing standing water in this area. Now, what they're trying to say is that this is also going to be used to get rid of yard water. Okay. So a yard drainage system. But I want to talk to you a little bit about this. We feel like if you're in a high clay uh, situation, if you've got a lot of clay around your home, this uh, uh, basically um, French drain is what this is called. It's a, it's a French drain. All right. This becomes less, if not ineffective, for standing water on the ground. Okay. And, and this proves it right here. Backfill tip. Do not backfill with soil with high clay. Well, if you're going to dig this out and you're going to take that dig out soil and you're going to put it back over that, uh, that French drain, you're taking high clay content soil and putting it back over. Now, what does that do? Whenever you have high clay soil, it doesn't leach very well versus a sandy mixed soil or a rock aggregate or something like that. So all I want to talk about here is a different way to do this, all right? So instead of using this to get rid of, of yard water, uh, standing yard water, we're gonna look at this in a different way. So let's go back up at the top and let's choose a different scenario. Let's choose this scenario right here. We've got a uh, neighbor runoff coming at us and we got standing water right here. So let's click here, choose our neighbor runoff. Look what they've done, okay? So they have a uh, an easy flow, uh, an aggregate, Right here, you can see it's an easy flow drain, okay, with uh, the uh, sock and the aggregate and all that. And the, the thing about it is typically they're going to put this about uh, six inches to 18 inches below the surface. It depends on how uh, deep you want it and all that. But keep in mind, this isn't going to do a whole lot in a high clay uh, system. So what we encourage you to do is if you still have a lot of water coming at you, you still have these basins here. I want you to instead not do the easy flow pipe. I want you to do this pipe right here. This guy. Okay. I know that they have this uh, in concrete, just like they had here in the front uh, with the, uh, with the uh, garage, but I want you to use this in the yard. Okay. Or something similar. You can use this in the yard. You can bury it in the yard. You can even create pop-up valves if you'd rather do that. But this is going to be your better pipe to use. A little bit more expensive, but a better pipe to use in a uh, yard drainage situation where you've got a lot of heavy clays and things like that around here. 
okay? And it can be done in grass. You, you will have that, it'll be sticking up, it'll be visible, just like it would be in the garage, in the driveway, okay? That is visible, you can see the grate, you're gonna be able to see the grate come all the way out and then to the pop-up valve. Now, you can switch it to an easy flow once you get it out of the area where you've got a lot of standing water, but I think one of the biggest mistakes a lot of these companies make and a lot of people make, and I've made it. I've, I've put French drains down inside of, uh, of the ground expecting that water to leach into that French drain, and it does eventually but if you've got a lot of water we have had a ton of rain this winter and last winter last winter we had five inches of rain in four hours this winter we've had probably 20 days of rain in january and and probably close to half of february we've gotten a lot of rain a lot of flash flood warnings and things like that a french drain is not going to move this kind of water in a clay situation. You're going to have to go with something that's a little bit closer to the surface. Now you can try to bury a French drain just below the, the sod or the grass or whatever, but it's still, it, I think you're better off going with the speedy channel in that situation. So here's a couple others we can look at. Here is a water uh, in a walkway. Now this again, uh, this is talking about catching water down below the uh, walkway, but imagine if you had a speedy channel right here, okay? So we've got a situation at our house where this uh, hill is putting water up against our walkway. So I'm not concerned about water on this side of the walkway, I'm concerned about water on this side. So we're gonna put a speedy channel right along this to catch all of that standing water that's hitting that walkway. Because what's gonna happen if you get a lot of standing water, it's gonna wash out your, your walkway right here, all your concrete, you're gonna to start to see it shift and move, okay? So I think if you use these speedy channels a little better versus these French drain style uh, channels that they have, you're gonna be a lot better off. So again, go to ndspro.com, uh, check out their, uh, their little way to do all this. Uh, here is a good one, a downspout runoff. Uh, uh, have everything go into your catch basin with your atrium grate. Water goes in, take it to your dry well, and if you don't have standing water in this area, then fine. Don't worry about having a speedy channel here. Just take it straight out to the street and let it let it lose itself out here. Make sure uh, that you just get this water off this downspout out of this area, so that way it's not flooding your basement, your crawl space, or your slab. So my name is Michael Church with Crawl Space Ninja. We hope you make it a happy and blessed day, and we'll see you later.